This video is brought to you by Hit Point Press. Battle the terrible darkness that has come to the forest in the new source book, adventure campaign, and bestiary, Seeds of Decay, on Kickstarter now. And by Steamforce Games in their Epic Encounter series. Each box features a complete adventure with minis, maps, and a module. Use our link below the video to see all the Epic Encounter adventures. Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. I am super excited about this one. We have a brick of Pathfinder Battles, the Mwangi Expanse to open up. This set is based on the Mwangi Expanse setting book for Pathfinder that came out last year. We have a full review of it and an interview with its development lead, Eleanor Farron, that you can watch in the eye in the corner of your screen right now. In my opinion, this is maybe the best campaign setting book that I've ever read. Much of the Mwangi Expanse is based on African culture, folklore, and mythology, and it is just chock full of amazing art and stories and vibrant cities and tons of player options and a wealth of adventure hooks. And if you want to run an adventure there, check out the Strength of Thousands Adventure Path where your PCs will start out as students at the Magambia, the oldest institution of arcane learning on Galarian, founded by old mage Jatembe himself. So I am really excited to dig into this set. And to celebrate, we're gonna do a giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber to the Gallant Goblin here on YouTube and leave me a comment down below letting me know which of the minis in here is your favorite. The winner will receive a booster box of the Mwangi Expanse as soon as it hits store shelves. And if you love Pathfinder content, check back in here soon because we are about to do a massive Pathfinder update covering all the new flip mats and tiles, secrets of magic, guns and gears, monsters of myth, Absalom City of Lost Omens, all of the new reference cards, Pathfinder Society modules, and much, much more. And last thing before we start, we just launched our first first ever Pathfinder supplement, Queerfinder. It is a gay travel magazine for Absalom full of adventures, taverns with NPCs and maps, lots of story hooks, new magic items, and lots of articles, stories, art, and comics from some of the best queer creators out there, including several veteran Paizo writers. Go check it out using the link below the video or go check out queerfinder.org. Okay. All of that out of the way, let me see if I can use a little magic here, if I can borrow this staff, and see if I can get this plastic wrap off of here. So here we go. Ah, fiddle. Why does this always keep happening to me? Ah, this is why I should have attended the Magambia instead of Magnamar Community College. All right, let's see if I can try this again. Ah, okay, there we go. Let me give this back to you. And put you over to the side here, and let's just do this one box at a time. I'm gonna slide some of these out of the way. I will say none of them are particularly heavy this time. So we'll see what that has in store for us. One thing about these minis now with the clear bases and the way we have our foaming set up here is that it's kind of dark in this room actually. And reading some of these bases might be tricky for me. So bear with me, I may not be able to read them all, but you'll be able to see what they are next to me. So let's start with the biggest one in the set. Looks like some sort of animal. It is a lioness, number 3042. TME, it says in the bottom for the Mwangi Expanse. One thing I like about the Pathfinder Battles minis is that they tell you which uh, set they came in. So they have the little abbreviations at the bottom. So there you go, cool little lioness. Here we have, uh, that's a spider creature with a little backpack and a wand on its back. And oh, it's nearly impossible to read on the bottom, but I'm pretty sure this is an Anadi. The Anadi are one of the new playable races in uh, the Mongi Expanse setting book that are kind of like were spiders, but not really. They can have a humanoid form where they look almost indistinguishable from a human, but then they can also have kind of a hybrid form and a spider form. And so this one is clearly one of those, very cool. And next we have, uh, looks like an adventurer. This is a Vidrian Revolutionary. It's a very cool little one that you can use for a, a explorer mini. Looks like it could be a good ranger or even a rogue if you want to, or of course an NPC. And we have a little one in here. Oh, these are all packaged really nicely. If I can get it out, there we go. And, oh dear. <laughs> okay, this is a uh, Elko, I think it's like Eloko, it's hard for me to see, but I think this is one of the uh, sort of alligator 
human hybrid kind of looking creatures. They have like alligator faces, if I remember correctly. They're smaller than I expected them to be. It's on a small base. Um, but definitely a cool looking creature to have to contend with in the jungles. All right, let's go to box number two. All right, this is one of the heavier ones. It also feels like there's something loose in here. Let's see. Oh, yes, a little bit of both. Uh, oh, very cool. Uh, this is the, oh boy. I'm gonna need my light. I'll try to hide it behind the box so I don't blind you all. Uh, Austin Bosom. Looks kind of like the, oh, like sloth, like a t t terror sloth of some sort. I remember seeing his art in the book, but I don't remember a ton about uh, what his uh, abilities are. I'm pretty sure he enjoys eating human flesh and he's probably not quite as slow as a sloth. But that is a very cool looking creature on a nice vine there. So very cool for your jungle adventures. This would also be great for your Tomb of Annihilation adventures if you're playing that for D&D. And here we have, oh, this must be a Gripply. Uh, fiend, Fiend Keeper? Oh, I can't remember, I can't, it's got a full name. Oh no, it's a frog folk, it says, frog folk. If I remember, if I'm reading it correctly. Uh, but the Gripplies are one of the new playable races in this, playable ancestries, excuse me, in this set as well. So if you want to play one of them, uh, I'm not sure if there's a difference between the frog folk and the Gripply, if I'm even reading that correctly. So forgive me, Fiend Keeper, frog folk, yeah, cool. It's always embarrassing because you can see right next to me what it says on the base. And you're like, Theo, why can't you read it? It's, it's right next to you, but it doesn't quite work that way. Uh, oh, this is a cute one. Uh, oh, this is one of those creatures. I remember this one a little bit from the book. Uh, this is a Rompo, I think it says. Uh, this is one of those creatures that is kind of an amalgamation of different kinds of animals all put together. It's got like the hind legs of a certain creature. And like I think it's supposed to have the front legs of like a badger and like human ears and like a cat-like face or something. It's just kind of one of those amalgamations uh, that you can fight in the jungles. And, doo -doo -doo. next we have another humanoid, but half white, half black. Uh, Umasi, I am not sure which one that one is, but very interesting looking. It looks almost, reminds me a little bit of the, uh, in the original Star Trek series where they had the creatures that had their face was white on one side and black on the other. This is just the hair on this one though. And the, the hands and arms as well. It kind of goes back and forth between white skin and black skin. So I don't recall the story behind them, but we'll find out for our full review. Let's go to the next box. All right, I'm gonna slide these guys in just a little bit. And let's try this one. All right, oh, this one's out of the box too. Uh, that's a brown bear. It's labeled as a grizzly bear. Can't have too many bears. That's a cool pose too. So definitely good for your druids as well. And just uh, a good animal companion. It's also one that might be summoned quite frequently by uh, some of your spellcasters. Uh, okay, this is what I was thinking that last one is. I do remember this creature. Um, I can't quite read its name. I just need to leave my light on here. It is a Canona. I'm also going to mispronounce pretty much everything that we read here today, so please forgive me for that one. What I do remember about these creatures is, if you can tell from the mini here, it is half incorporeal, half translucent. And uh, these are creatures that are clearly from some other plane, some other planet, but no one knows what their origin is. Um, they are fairly evil creatures, if I remember correctly, um, but their origin is completely mysterious. And yeah, they have their body is just kind of incorporeal, like mist or phantom illusions or something like that. So kind of a cool creature that you might be able to decide uh, at your own table where they're from because uh, the origin in the book is left very nebulous. Here we have, what is a sturgy looking thing? It is a blood seeker. So yeah, pretty much like a sturge. I think it's a little bit different. I don't remember the story behind this one either, but definitely looks like something you wouldn't want to come across when you're out exploring in the woods. And uh, finally, oh, that's cool. 
we have a Copper Man. Oh, that's cool too. That's a very cool looking mini. Comes with like a little sickle almost. Androids. I believe they finally have made androids as a playable ancestry in Pathfinder as well. I might be mistaken. I vaguely remember that from Guns and Gears, but I haven't had a lot of time to look through that book. But yeah, this is also one of the creatures that's talked about in this book. Very cool. Looking forward to remembering more about him. All right, let's keep going. Okay, box number four. This one might be a little bit heavier. All right. Throw this off to the side. Let's see what our big creature is here. Uh, okay, I do remember these because this art is unforgettable. Uh, what are they called though? This is an Agamuna handstand. So these are creatures who are also fairly evil. Um, it seems like a night, maybe not the most uh, efficient evolutionary track for them to take, but they have their eyeballs on the bottoms of their feet. So they have to get on their hands in order to look around. Uh, their eyes, if I remember correctly, are pretty well protected from the sand and the grit of the ground. But yeah, they have to kind of run around on their feet and then plop up on their hands when they want to look around. Uh, and they're not that friendly either. So that, that's one of the most... I wonder what this... Like, I wonder where this folklore comes from. I really... I'm sure there must be some sort of old mythology or something that that story is from, so I really want to look that up too. But definitely a cool creature for your players to come across. All right, here we have... Is it say Kishi? Yeah, Kishi. I'm not familiar with this one either. Um, it could be a player character, but I think they've got like a bear head on their... on their hair, on their head. Not quite a hat. Oh man, I don't remember this one. It almost looks like half of their head is a bear. So I'm gonna have to go look this one up. Uh, kind of gives me hag vibes too with the pose. So we will learn more about that one. That one's gonna be an interesting one to read about. Let's see what's next. A Spearman. This is a Sean Senbe, if I remember correctly. One interesting thing about the Mongi Expanse is there are multiple tribes or types of elves and humans and dwarves and halflings. And so you can read about the various different societies and cultures uh, uh, for all of them. So maybe this is one of those. It looks human, if I can tell, but I'm not entirely sure. And we got one more in this one. So, so far we've gotten, you know, large minis as we're topping out. And we're getting four to a, four to a case here. Uh, okay, this is another Anadi, I believe. Yeah, this is the Anadi Elder Human form or something like that. Hunter, if I remember reading it slightly correctly. But yeah, this is the hybrid spider form of the Anadi. So it's kind of cool if you do play an Anadi character, having a human mini and a hybrid mini and a spider mini might be what you need in order to fulfill all the different forms that you can have in your adventures. So it's kind of fun too. All right, let's keep on going. Oh my gosh, we're already halfway done. Let's see what's next. Okay. Put the box over here. And what is our big one this time? Oh my gosh. Is this a... Okay, this is an uh, Agamuna... Agamuxa? Uh, please forgive me if I'm mispronouncing these. It's really hard to see. Plus, it's hard to pronounce. Uh, yeah, I can mix, uh, uh, this is the running form. Oh, that's creative. So it's, I don't remember this art in the book at all, but perhaps it is there. Um, yeah, so we can kind of compare. They are, I believe they are giant kin, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so that explains why they're on large bases and larger than our PC minis. But yeah, it's running and it runs in a form where it can lift his foot up really high so it can see where it's going. How cool is that? It does look like it's the same character, just in two different forms. That is super cool. All right. And here we have, oh, that's so cute. Um, an ant knoll. Oh, I just called a knoll cute, but it is. It's kind of cute. It's also small. 
Knoll is another one of the playable races introduced, playable ancestries introduced in the Mwangi Expanse, much to my chagrin. Uh, I don't remember Ant Knoll being one, but that might be a heritage in there uh, for the Knolls. Each uh, ancestry in Pathfinder comes with three, four, or five, I think, different ancestries that you can choose from uh, to kind of further differentiate your character. Uh, this looks like another one of, is it the same one? I think it is. Yeah, the same ones before the, oh gosh, the ro Rumpa, Rumpo, Rumpo. So we have another one of those. Cool, cool, cool. And finally, there is, oh dear, clumsy this morning. Uh, oh, that's cool, so he's holding a scythe or sickle. Uh, this is a Kava Stalker. Oh, I don't remember the Kavas, but I believe they are, I believe these are intelligent, since it's wielding a tool, creatures that you can find in the jungle. I think this is one of the creatures in the actual best year at the end of the book, because I vaguely remember its art back there. So definitely a cool creature. This book has got a lot of cool things that you can come across when you're exploring. So let's go ahead and open up our next box. Okay. So again, yeah, these are, I believe, we're not gonna have any huges in this set. Some of the Pathfinder ones still only go up to large, uh, sort of like the old D&D &D ones. So don't expect to get any larges, to my knowledge. We'll see, maybe I'm wrong. But I think these are the old style boxes that are a little bit smaller too. Uh, oh, wow, that's cool. This is the, yeah, the, ooh, Karina. I don't know if I'm reading it correctly. Uh, this is sort of the, uh, owl folk uh, that are introduced in this one that are, I believe these are also quite evil creatures. Might have got to make cute owl things evil if I remember correctly. But, oh, it's very cool with the smoke effect at the bottom. Uh, it has arms under its wings, so it has actually arms and hands ending in these talons that are really uh, deadly. So that's a cool, very cool mini. Uh, here we have another potential PC mini. It looks like an archer. It is a... Ooh, it's, I think it's an elf. It is an... Ekuje Ranger. Yeah, I believe the Ekuje are one of the elven uh, tribes that you can come across. I think there's three different elven uh, societies and tribes in the Mongi Expanse, if I remember correctly. One of them is like very reclusive, and there's different ones. I don't remember which is which off the top of my head, but we'll find out for the full review. All right. And if I can get this guy out. Okay, this is another repeat. It is the uh, Kishi with the bear on the head. I really want to learn what these are about. I'm gonna have to look that up after this uh, after this video so I can see what those are because I'm super curious what that bear is. If it's an actual like half bear head or if it's something that they captured and placed on their head. Uh, and yeah, this is also a repeat. This is another Beloko, I believe. The little uh, crocodile headed creatures, if I am remembering. Okay, so a couple repeats. Let's keep on going. All right. This one's a little heavy. I'm going to scoot these guys over. Okay. I haven't looked to see which ones are uh, rares either, but you should be able to hopefully somewhat tell if we can kind of figure out from the numbering on the side of the screen there. Ooh, that's a nice jungle drake. Oh, uh, that's one of the coolest minis we've come across yet. They can sometimes make pretty good use of these large size bases, really filling them up completely. Yeah, that's a cool creature. Pretty nicely painted for some of these WizKids minis. Cool. All right. Next one. Ooh, they're a little tricky one to get out. Uh, oh my gosh. Oh, this is one of the uh, orcs that you can come across. It is a uh, Matanji. Oh man, these are just so hard to read. Orcs. So there's also, I believe, more than one tribe of orcs that you can find there. And I think these orcs are, if I remember correctly, they are still ferocious and they still like to, oop, turn that off, timer. <laughs> they only like to fight demons or devils or something to that effect. That's what they go after. They're not really necessarily a threat to the humans or the elves or the dwarves or the halflings. They only go after demons and devils. What is this? 
Oh, that's just a cool creature. Or such a cool mini. That would be a fantastic player character. Uh, it is a... Uh, it is a priest. It is a Singor priest. Oh, if you're playing a Mwangi adventure and you want to play like a druid or a spellcaster, that is one of the coolest ones I've seen. I love that so much. Got a little bit of a Raiden vibe with the hat. But that is a super cool mini. All right. And the bright purple one. Oh, I remember this art. This is one of the dwarves. Um, this is a... Ooh, I can't quite read it. Turalu dwarf, maybe? I believe if I'm remembering these... No, this is not one of those. There's some of the dwarves that, after the search for Sky, when they came out of the underground uh, to move to the surface, there are some of the uh, one tribe of dwarves who thought that they had, they saw the sky and they thought this, oh, this is just another big earthen chamber. And if we keep going up, we can break through that blue ceiling up there. And they just climbed to the top of the tallest mountain. They kept on digging and it says, you know, dwarves can dig through anything. And they eventually broke through the sky and they managed to find their way to the plane of air. And so that's kind of where they met some cloud dragons and things like that. So I, I don't think this is the same dwarf society as that one. Um, but, you know, that was just one of the stories that I really remembered from this book. It's such a good one. Okay, we've got one more box left. Okay, so last box. That's oh, a little heavy. I'm always excited when they're heavy. Okay. Oh. Something's cool in here. Yeah, we're going to keep one box up here so we remember what we're doing. Put it over here. Okay, what is this treant looking thing? Oh man, so cool. Get it out of here without breaking anything. Go away. All right, this is an arboreal warden. Turned his arm into a shield. It has a nice can't tell what the sword is actually made out of, if it's supposed to be wood as well, or if it's supposed to be actually metal. But that's a very cool tree creature. I love it so much. That can be a lot of fun. Let's see what we have in the other little boxes. Oh, this one looks really cool too. Oh my god! Uh, a black heron. I don't remember these either. I don't remember this part of the book. But that is a super cool mini. I don't know if that's a mask or if that's their face. I will have to look that up for a full video, but that is one of the coolest minis too. This set is so full of creative and cool creatures, which I'm not surprised coming from this book. This is a great set for them to choose. Okay, this is one of the other playable ancestries in this adventure. This is a Goloma. Uh, the Goloma, if I remember correctly, are creatures that uh, believe that they're prey. They think that anything that has well, like two eyes or something like that, is uh, a predator to them. And so they kind of live in fear, but they've learned to take on, be able to do these ferocious looking uh, appearances when they need to scare off what they consider to be predators. And they have all those eyes on them. Uh, so another really cool playable ancestry for this adventure. And finally, we have an little animal. Looks like a leopard of some sort. It is a leopard. <laughs> I'm surprised I never get my big cats. Uh, correct, uh, which is surprising since I have so many cats. But yeah, I don't remember ever having a leopard mini before in any of our uh, any of our sets. So that's a nice one to have too. Just a regular old creature. And yeah, this is the box. I thought for a second that I forgot to open one. So yeah, Pathfinder Battles the Mwangi Expanse is scheduled to hit store shelves and sometime in quarter one, 2022. So sometime between like right now as you're watching this in March, I'm not really sure. We will have a review of the premium figures from this set very soon. We did get those. And as soon as we get a full set of these minis, we'll do our full set review. Though I am aware that I still owe you a full set review of the last Pathfinder Battle set, Bestiary Unleashed. So please be patient with us. It's been a very busy couple of months, but I am on it. I'm working on it. Uh, now let me tell you a little bit about Seeds of Decay, the new Kickstarter from our friends at Hitpoint Press. A crack has formed in the darkness of the always green forest, leaking rot and decay. Trees are withering and crops are failing to mature. Strange twisted creatures have been seen in the shadows. The Rot Weaver has returned. Will you save the forest from the spreading decay before it's too late? Seeds of Decay is a brand new adventure for 5e that brings you into the dark, whimsical world of the Daubers. 
Enjoy fully illustrated quests with unique maps, NPCs, monsters, and much more. Along with this grand adventure comes over 60 unique scalable and unique monsters that will tangle up every encounter, as well as new magic items, spells, races, classes, and subclasses. And if that wasn't enough, a brand new system for building contraptions and tools. And if they meet their stretch goals, I see some cool looking minis on the horizon as well. Check out the Seeds of Decay Kickstarter using the link in the eye in the corner of your screen right now, or on the doohickey down below. And have you picked up a box from the Epic Encounters line yet from Steamforce Games? If you have, let me know about it in the comment section down below. I am actually scheduled to have a chat with some folks over at Steamforce this week, so I'm gonna see if I can talk them into giving me a little bit of scoop on the next Epic Encounters box. If you haven't picked up one yet, what are you waiting for? Each one contains gorgeous unpainted minis, a beautiful reusable double-sided map, and an adventure module to run with stat blocks and story hooks and a story and lots of full lore and boss tactics and new abilities and just so much more. These boxes are some of the best deals in gaming. Go pick up one today. That's Epic Encounters from Steamforce Games. And thank you for watching today and thank you to Paizo for, and WizKids for sending us these awesome minis. I am very excited for this full set. There are some really cool minis here. Uh, and don't forget to enter the giveaway by being a subscriber and leaving me a comment below with your favorite mini in this set so far. Be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on all of our upcoming Pathfinder content. And by the way, if you're not playing Pathfinder 2nd Edition, do yourself a favor. Go check out our review of the Pathfinder Beginner Box by clicking the eye in the corner of your screen right now. It's a great introduction to the system. And you can check out QueerFinder at QueerFinder.org and you can sign up for our upcoming Cobalt Plush Kickstarter at CobaltPlush.com. Finally, you can find us on Discord, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. For now, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>